What's up, Jose? What's going on? Love the hoodie. This is nice. This is great <laughs> material. Beautiful material. This is one of the nicest ones I've ever had. Yeah, we went all out. Wow. This we got those when the uh, the pros from the Boston Pro were coming into town, and I called the uh, shirt maker, and like you know, we've all had those like five dollar shirts that people give away, and you wear them once because it's a throwaway shirt. But I was like, give me the nicest shit, like something like Alpha Elite or any of these high high end companies, yeah. you know, these like eighty dollar hoodies. Um, so yeah, he delivered, man. Those hoodies are crazy nice quality the shirts too like very very stretch and thin so nice yeah it's it cost, nice it cost a fortune though i think like our cost on the hoodie like before the ink is like 38 bucks just for, just for the hoodie before you print on it yeah yeah, yeah. hey listen but people you, want to wear them when you trade in the basement you can afford to get nice hoodies. <laughs> exactly <laughs> So we got a lot of things to talk about, catch up with. I'm just going to clean off my cat's bullshit here. One, I want to share on here what I've been doing with Evan, the Senapani Circle on yes. uh, Telegram. Anyone who hasn't joined up, go on to Telegram and uh, you can basically join a group chat of, of myself, Evan Senapani. Lee Priest, Guy Sistanino, James Hollingshead, Fuad, Antoine Valiant, um, Chris Tuttle. Who else? Am I missing anyone? I think that's about it. Eight guys, eight or nine yep. guys. this is me or you that keeps pausing is it me or you it was you yeah it's me you don't want to admit to it being the basement wi-fi <laughs> um anyway um so a lot lots of topics lots of fun interesting stuff you can you can add to it ask questions um you know we we do everything post old pictures like we've me and guy posted pictures from our first ever show which reminds me i should post that picture of guy and i together for the first time ever uh, i'm just gonna brutalize guy every time i get <laughs> on the every chance um so that's uh one thing so go to telegram download telegram it's kind of like a whatsapp or a, a, a signal or something like that right and yep. um yep. you can get on there and interact with all all those guys it's pretty cool. Um, there's really nothing like that out there. It's kind of like the old forums, but there's no longer forums. And you know, Instagram and stuff, people, they don't always respond to you because uh, there's a lot of trolls and stuff. So here it's more like people that are genuinely interested in uh, getting information. Like Tuttle's a wealth of knowledge when it comes to um, pretty much everything. But you, you know, it, it's more for that stuff. There's a lot of bullshit too between me and Lee Priest and uh and uh yeah, me and Lee Priest are the nonsense type guys. Um, but yeah, it's good. It feels like like you know, I'm on it and I'm I'm I jump on a few times a day just to see what's what's going on and catch up. And it just feels like you're you got invited to a group text message amongst good friends. Yeah. So it's like That's a side of all you guys that you know you don't always get to see. You know, thanks to like Fuad's podcast and, and things like that, that's helped, right? To show James's personality and Fuad's personality and Guy certainly on, on the podcast. But this, you really get a sense like in real time, this is what someone's doing right now. You know, Guy will post, I'm in Sweden right now. Here's what I'm doing. And then five of you jump on and bust his balls of something. You yeah. know, it's like a group text of buddies. So it's a really cool look at, you know, I've been fortunate to be around you and be around these guys that you know and see a very different side than when I was just a fan on the outside. So this exactly. really gives people the inside to see like you guys are all really close and really friends and, and you know, but certainly don't miss a chance to bust each other's balls whenever you can. Yes, exactly. And that, that's, that's a great way to describe it. It's just a, 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 an inside look at how we communicate and um you know we do talk about this 
kind of stuff um, often within ourselves, you know? Um, so you get to see it, it's pretty cool. Um, but we also, something, did we cover the New Englands last time? No, no, we, we did this, uh, last one we did was like a week or so before. So we definitely have to cover that. And I've got some questions related to that for you as well. All right, so quickly, uh, it was the smallest Cutler New Englands probably ever since, since, since Jay and Steve took over. Um, I believe there was 63 or 75 uh, total um, people in the show, which is very small, maybe 10 bodybuilders total, uh, you know, maybe five or six bikini girls total. It was small. It was small. Yeah, I, I heard the number 66 and that would be like, normally you'd have more classic physique guys than that, you know, in a show or yeah. men's physique or bikini alone, you know, you might have, a hundred bikini girls between all the classes. Yeah, I don't know why. Um, you know, part of it was it was spring break week. It was marathon was was the following Monday. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe Easter the weekend, Passover. Yeah, all that. Easter. There was a lot of excuses. I don't I you know, I can't blame it on, on one particular thing. Yeah. I'm also finding a trend, and we may have touched on this before, that a lot of competitors. Due to social media and this fake image they have to uphold, are no longer competing in front of their local people. Mm. You know, they're like, oh, I'm this, I'm that, I'm this, I'm gonna do this show. It's an East Oga show. And uh, you know, they don't want to compete in front of their local gym members or local social media people. So they go to Texas, they go to Florida, and they get spanked down there. You know, what is the point? It doesn't matter. Do it here. Save money. You know, anyone that would rather go do Eastern in New England. Um, there we go. Are you stoned or did you freeze for a second? <laughs> no, oh. You froze up. Oh, all right. Did you hear what I was saying? Uh you said anyone that would rather do Easterns rather than New England's and you cut out. Yeah, I said they're crazy. Yeah. You're going to spend a lot of money. You can't sleep in your own bed. You know, there's a lot of stress involved with the travel and packing and, you know, just being out of your element. I would always much rather tr compete locally. Yeah. Um, so if anyone's out there listening, debating whether to go do a show, you know, of course, if you don't qualify at the New Englands and the Easterns is the following week, then go do it, you know, if that's your goal. But don't travel just because you're afraid to compete in front of your own people, you know, or, or, or the, this judge isn't going to judge you right, you know. Like so many people are worried about the judges. You know, oh, I don't like Sandy. I'm not going to do... I'm just going to do, do shows that Steve does. And then you get smoked in front of Steve. You know, <laughs> it's really not that big a deal. It's not this big conspiracy that you think it is. And if you think it is, then you're, 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 you're in the wrong sport. You know, yeah. you, you got to bring your best at all times. Um, so that being said, um, we, had, we did have some fantastic uh, uh, um, competitors. Uh, you know, the winners were really good. Uh, the winners would have likely won no matter who showed up. Um, so that is a good thing. Yeah. I think, um, you know, the kid that won, I forget his name. Is his name Farmer or something? Uh, 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 for bodybuilding? Yeah. Uh, David uh, Farwell. He, his, his IG is like Fitwell or something like that. David but David's his first name. Farwell. Farwell, yeah. He had an exceptional shape to him. He's a guy that you know, was a lightweight, a middleweight, a light heavyweight, now a heavyweight, you know, um, and he's come a long way. He's made some huge improvements and he, he was, he was very good. Um, he wasn't my choice for the overall, but he was very, very good. He's kind of speaking to what you, you said earlier. What, what's really cool about that with, with that kid, his friend, um, John McGovern, right. Who little did John. yeah, little John who won new England's last year is it's real these kids do these local shows year after year david took a few years off right but they're always doing cutler new england's cutler new england's and you get to see them progress over years 
yeah. right? See their progress. And they have the shots of that same banner in the background of Cutler New England's. And, and so that's a really cool thing too. When you talk about another reason to, to do the local show, it, one, one thing I'll point out, you know, um, so Jay, Jay Cutler came by my gym Friday night, the night before his show. Hung out for like three and a half hours, all the college kids, and got a awesome. lift in with, with Angie, his girlfriend, and then just another two, two and a half hours of talking. And the, I asked him sort of selfishly, hey, Jay, if you're me, I turned 41 last weekend, I want to do a few pro shows, what would you do? You know, and I sort of joked, uh, you know, as I always do, would you would you do the guy's sister Nino and find the Niagara Falls pro? And he laughed at that. Or, you know, do you go into the New York pro where you know, you might not even have a shot at making top five, but it's, it's a big show and you're standing next to the big guys and Jay's, Jay's answer. Well, I get it. It wasn't one of my options in that way. He said, you do the New York pro because it's closest to home and your friends and family can come and see it. And that's what this is about. And also you support Steve because Steve's bring, Steve keeps bodybuilding in this area. And when you go to compete, you do Steve's show. Yeah. And it was it's sort of along the lines of like, if you're a bodybuilder in New England, and Boston area, if you're flying out to shows in Florida and Texas and God knows where for some rinky dink local show, you're not supporting the scene here. Eventually there might not be one. Right. Right. You know, so it's like, if you love this sport, man, you got to support it in your, in your community, yeah. you know, going to see people competing in it. That's what keeps this thing going. Yeah. For any local New England bodybuilder, fitness, bikini, any division, the New York Pro is our Olympia. You know, it, if if because most people won't make it to an Olympia, but if you can go do the New York Pro, it's the biggest, baddest, best show that you might ever be a part of. So that is is the show you need to do. You know, I did it five times, um, and in. And it was awesome every time. And it's, it's, you know, um, to those of us who've done it and been there, and it's the third biggest show in the world. It's the third most prestigious show in the world. Um, so to not do it is crazy. Um, and as Jay said, it's local, as we were just talking about. You, you can drive there in three and a half, four hours bring the comforts of home with you and, and um, a lot of your friends and family can attend it, be there to support you. Um, that's for sure the show I would like to see you do. You, know, If, for example, like this year, there's the India week before yeah. and it might not be as competitive as New York, would we go do that? You're in shape anyway? Yeah, I, I would advise that, but I would definitely do New York. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, I mean, we got so many things to cover yeah. with that. I guess going back to the show, but I, I wanted to point that out because it was just another reason of like the kid David that won, you know, and, and John, his, his training partner and buddy is just a cool example when people do those local shows over and over again. For me, you know, well, personally, I might have had your client, John, the super heavyweight winning the overall. It was very close, you know, and, and I might have given it to, to John to see this kid David win it knowing him, having seen him around the community, he's at every show when it comes around cheering yeah. on his friends to see him win it after years and years of doing these shows was a really good story. Like it was a good feel good ending for, for him competing in these shows. And you only get that if you, if you do these shows over the years. Right. Absolutely. He was certainly a, a deserving winner. Yeah. Um, but you know, just matters of opinion, John, John, as you touched on six foot two, 245 pounds in the best condition of his life and this is only his third show so he's getting better at, at, at you know a rapid pace he's going to get better he'll do the new england's in the fall and um he he's really good um who won the classic the, the guy that you've been helping with posing evan uh, ivan ivan yep ivan ivan he didn't win the overall but he did nope. win his class correct he won his class and then um uh, what's his name? You worked with him a little bit. Ryan, right? Won the overall. Ryan. Yes, yep. Ryan Sullivan. Yep. It's Sullivan, right? Yeah. His his Instagram Sul Sulatan or something. I don't know. Um, yes, he looked great. See, that's what condition does. He brought great condition, 
He was very balanced. He's not overly muscular. Not you know. And he came up to me. What do I need to improve? I'm like, eh, nothing. Just, just get a little, you know, bigger. I'm sure he has a few pounds to spare in the weight division. Um, That's, you talk about this a lot. Of like, you know, it's it. it you know, you're always you're always going to get killed by the genetically gifted black guy with round muscle and tiny waist. Yeah. But you can be that. You know that suck down white guy that's just you know the the white guy peeled and you know it's hard to beat when when you're just you know just absolutely peeled up there you might not have the prettiest physique yeah. but you got to give it to that guy yeah well that's when it comes down to who checks the most boxes you know he wasn't super round he wasn't overly pretty he wasn't but at the same time he was very conditioned presented himself well very balanced, wasn't really missing anything, wasn't huge anywhere. And then at the end of the day, when you see his, his skin, his color, his posing, his, his level of muscularity, he wins, you yeah. know, and, and that was good. Yeah. And that's proof positive that, that always err on the side of coming in as dry and hard as you can. Yeah. And, you know, unfortunately that ends, that causes trouble for some people because it can be dangerous if you're not smart. But bring the best shape you can, and you're going to do well. You know, um, the other kid, Andrew Stebbins, that I was helping, he's an, another example of he can be very good because he has that crazy genetics to get wild condition, you know. Um, just over time, when he that was his first show ever, if he can, um, you know, which he will get better at pre presentation and. The, the small things involved in, in, in bodybuilding, um, just posing, looking not so nervous and, um, you know, adding muscle in little areas, but he's got the condition thing down, that Caucasian dry thing. Yeah. He's got <laughs> it. Yeah. So here's a question for you on this. So, you know, you already touched upon this, the turnout of this show was not great. The, you know, the, the smallest turnout that we've ever seen in, in the history of going to these shows um, but the people that won were very good. So we're not taking anything away from them. Um, here's the question. And I'm sure you might have been asked this by some of your people is so there's a lot of people that got nationally qualified at this show. Right. Yeah. And so you could have a great winner where they might have won under any circumstances if, you know, there were 600 competitors in the show. Um, but you had maybe a second place person that there was a, a big drop off from first to second, right? And yeah. there were some classes for bodybuilding where there were one person, right? It was like, you're the winner, you're the one person, or there were top two or top three, there wasn't even enough people to do a top five, right? So that second place person is qualified for nationals for a national event. Um, what are your recommendations kind of, a you know, not only for this show, but we're starting the, the season, there's shows every weekend at this point around the country. There's people listening who probably just eked out a qualification placing second in something or are going to compete, and that's they're fixated on that. When should they go on to a national show? How do you know? So here's the thing. It's not for me to tell you, you know, what to do because there are some people who are like, yeah, I don't care. I know I'm going to get smoked. I just want to go see what it's like. I have five grand to waste. Uh, you know, okay, well, sure, give your money to the NPC. They'll gladly take it, you know, and uh, what's her name? Pam Betts at the Nationals. She'll take your money. Go ahead. Um, but if your goal is to win or be competitive, I would tell them straight up, no, you're not ready. You know, if I was helping them or if they asked me, I would say, no, 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 no. You know, you take your time. You, you, you know, especially someone who plays second at a local show. I'd say, no, no, take your time, take another year, see if you can win this show next year. If you win it, then you know you're improving. Um, then maybe go on to a regional event like, uh, you know, junior nationals or, or, you know, that's kind of how it used to work. You'd win locally and then you'd, you'd, you'd win the Massachusetts. Then you'd win the New England. Then you might go do junior nationals. Then you go to USA's on nationals. Um, and that's kind of the progression that they should take. But now because of social media, everyone's like, journey for the pro card. 
And you're not even close, not even remotely close. Um, and that's, a, that, that's kind of part of the problem of the watering down over the past few years that everyone's getting a pro card. It used to be that without a shadow of a doubt, you knew when you saw a pro, that's a pro. Oh my God, that's a pro. Um, now you're like, what? That's a pro? You know, they're, they're, because there's so many of them. And, um, you know, that's why everyone thinks they can be a pro. Because oh, I saw him, he didn't look that great. Didn't look, you know, I could do that. Oh, okay. Um, so I would, as a coach or as a friend or as someone to help you avoid some of the pitfalls, like, for example, I had this conversation with Big John. He, you know, what do you think? What do you want? What do you think we should do? I'm like, shut it down. Shut it down. Let's grow. Let's, let's, um, you know, clean out for a little while then then grow and, and work on your weaknesses. Come back. Let's see what we can do with the New Englands. If you can blow out the New Englands, then we'll talk about doing nationals a few weeks later. Um, then that, then you're worthy of it. But he's so tall structurally to fill that out and go stand on a super heavyweight stage at nationals is, is, is pretty crazy. You know, um, it'll be hard to do. His condition is certainly worthy and his shape. He's got a beautiful physique um, is certainly worthy, but he just needs to put more time in and he's got time. So I told him straight up, let's aim for the new Englands again, take some time off, grow. We got plenty of time. Um, you know, same thing with pretty much everyone. Uh, it, it's that simple. Wait till you're ready and ask someone who knows. Don't decide on yourself unless that's, like I said at the beginning, that's what you want to do. Go and uh, just enjoy the the experience. I've seen many of those, but but that, for me, that's not what I want to do. I don't want to spend my money for no reason and not even be able to place. For you, is is it about? Are are you thinking in your head in terms of giving someone the green light? Is it like can they make top five? Can they make a first call out? Is that what you're looking for? Um, in order I don't to care play. because I'm I, we have no control over places, sure. right? I don't think about I want to take a picture of that face. <laughs> <laughs> Can you bring a national level physique? That's what I think about. Can you bring a competitive physique? That's what I think about. I don't know where they're going to place, you know, but I know it when I see it, if that is a local guy or that's a national level guy, or that's a pro guy, I can see it within seconds. You know, I know. And, and unfortunately, like, like, like John, for example, he's too tall and thin, quote unquote, thin 245 pounds. I mean, he's already 270 now. Um, but on stage in contest shape, he's going to be going against guys that are 5'10, 250, where he's 6'2, 245. Yeah. He's got to fill out. So let's not waste time. And especially when he tells me, you know, I want to win. I don't want to just go. All right, well, we're not going. <laughs> right. I know you're not ready to win. Yeah. Um, th th that's it. I, I want them to be able to be at the point where I see you're clearly beyond the um, uh, the local scene. Like with you, you were able to win at, at significantly. You know what I mean? You didn't win the overall. Did you end up winning the overall at the no. Cutler? No. no. No, I just yeah, you, you very well could have. Yeah, it was, it was a close one, yeah. Yeah, um, and that's when we knew. That's when your physique really changed. I was like, wow, that's real deal. And even you were still like, eh, I don't know. You know, I'm like, no, no, no. Look, you, you were, you're making, and then you continued on that trajectory to, to grow and get even better, you know? Um, so then that's when we decided to do a national show. Yeah. Every person's going to be different. A lot of coaches don't care. They just say, do whatever you want. I'll help you, you know? I don't like that. I don't like bringing someone somewhere where they're, uh, their hopes may be, um, they may be slightly skewed, you know, and then they're devastated by coming in 15th and they never want to do it again. 
I've seen that happen so much. Like you have people, you know, like a lot of people in this sport are very insecure, you know, and it comes, it's a beauty pageant, right? As much as we say sport, it's, it's, it's a pageant. And you have people out there that like, don't I look good? You're on stage, right? And, and you get first or second, and that's enough to say, I do look good. You get validation. And you go to one of these national events and, and get third, fourth call outs. They can't handle that. Yeah. You know, of, of it, there's no validation there. And, and I've seen so many people do that and never compete again after that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, it would make me not want to have anything to do with it. But the important thing is to avoid that by having someone tell it to you straight on your way in. No, you're not going to do well. You know, um, I could tell someone. So you're going to say, they could stand in front of me a week out and say, how am I going to do? I'd say, uh, I don't know. You're not gonna, I don't know. I can't say you're going to place 11th or 7th, but you're not going to win. Yeah. I, I can just tell you're not going to win. There's going to be someone at the national level who is more polished, put together, you know, more professional looking. Cause that's ultimately what the goal is to be the most professional looking. So uh, speaking of looking, I wanted to go back to um, uh, Jay called me the other day, I uh, texted me and said, Hey, I need all the addresses of the overall winners. Um, I'm sending them a Cardillo belt, a signed Cardillo belt. So um, I did my homework and then I realized because he asked me specifically, what's the figure overall winner? What's the wellness overall winner? And then I had to tell him that we didn't have a wellness overall winner. And I'm like, poor Mariana, she would be getting a nice delivery of a Cutler Cardillo belt signed by Jay, uh, which she more than deserves. Yeah. And because of some sort of malfunction backstage where the class B girl never showed up they didn't do an overall. Yeah. That was a big mistake and that shouldn't have happened. And, and Mariana deserves a belt. So I almost called them back and said, Hey, do me a favor, just send her one anyway. Um, but at the same time, I don't want, um, if I were her, I wouldn't want it. You know what I mean? I'd be like, you know, fuck it. They didn't give it to me. I didn't get it. I don't want it. I'll get one. You know what I mean? Yeah. She'll get one at another time but uh, mariana gomez she was a little 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 pocket rocket she was uh jacked you know a lot of good muscle on her in good shape she can be better she needs a little more glute her quads are dominant she needs a little more glute in separation in the hamstring glute you know she can just be a little but she's like what 14 how old is she 24 <laughs> something like I, that yeah. yeah yeah she's she's just getting going She's going to be really good. The, that, um, you know, that was a good example of, you know, it's happened to me too. Um, when I had done Costa Rica, I signed up for two divisions, open and masters. Yeah. And they're calling the people for masters and they didn't call me. And I go up and I say, hey, I paid for this thing. We don't have you on the list. Sorry. You know, th those expediters backstage, oh. they, they're in no position of power. They have their piece of paper and they have to give order to, you know, line people up by these numbers and that's it. So if they don't have you on the list, they don't have you on the list. Somebody made a mistake early on. So that's happened to me before. And, you know, what sucked is in Costa Rica is I don't know anybody there, right? You don't, I don't know somebody who can talk to somebody who all any of that stuff. Right. So I just lost out. I lost the money. I didn't get to go on stage. Ah. Yeah. And um, the best we- You have won? Oh yeah, easily. <laughs> it, it was another one where I would have won a sword and, you know. Yeah. Uh, so- that's a good example, though, of, you know, what happened to Mariana and, and, you know, it's who knows how it happened, you know, but it's devastating. So everyone who wasn't there knows she signed up for novice and for open and she's clearly an open competitor. The goal was do this show, qualify, go on to, you know, whatever the show is, Junior USA's or whatever. Yeah. And she went out for novice clear winner. She doesn't come out for open. And I'm sitting next to her boyfriend who I helped, you know, for, for the show proposing. And, and I'm like, where's your girl at? And he's like, I don't know. I'm like, go backstage and figure it out. You know, like she, she should be out there. Like, this is, this is what she came here for. Yeah. So he runs backstage and they didn't have her on the list and they wouldn't let her out. And um, you know, it's not that expediter's fault. They have to follow that other people could be jumping in. And so 
you know, we were able to figure out who do you have to talk to? Does she have proof that she paid? What are the steps? You know, um, clearly, you know, we've known her. She's been training in my gym for, you know, the last couple of months. And all she's done is talked about doing this show and qualifying. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So clearly she signed up for open. Um, and thank God, you know, the, uh, um, whether it's the head judge or Heidi or whoever, you know, went through the process and said, we'll rejudge it, let her come out at night. Um, but it initially, goes that- we're going to give her her money back. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, no, 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 no. She wants to compete. Yeah. I'm like, it'll take five minutes. There's only three girls. Yeah. Judge them again tonight. Yeah. And like, oh, okay. All right. Whatever. Um, you get it. You know, being a competitor, right? Of you can yeah. you imagine training everything she put into this show or anyone that's doing these things, and you don't compete because of a clerical error. You know, yeah. um, heartbreaking. Yeah. Uh, so I'm glad. You know, that part at least she got to go up there. She got. She was the clear winner clearly would have been the overall again another error of my understanding was the the girl was in class b was in the bathroom and wasn't there and she was the only competitor for class b so they moved on they went to bikini and then she comes back and she's like when do i get to go out and somebody made some impromptu decision backstage and said um well you missed it but we'll let you compete we'll throw you out with the bikini girl so they put oh her my god that's ter- so, terrific so that's like what that. happened is she was there she missed oh. pulling out and because she missed that there's now no overall wellness for mariana you know yeah. but when i pulled mariana aside because obviously she was emotional as anyone would be that all the work that you put into this and and is it's like look you're going to be so much bigger than this show this is going to be so in the past like you know, when I didn't win the overall at Cutler, like I wasn't heartbroken. I was like, no, that was very close. And, and um, a month later, it didn't matter, right? I was focused on the next thing and being better. And, and yeah. those, the, the talk I gave to Marianne is like, you know, poor girl, man, had like everything that could go wrong on paper. Um, no fault of her own go wrong for her at this show. Right. So these are valuable lessons. Um, People listening out there, if you're going to compete, get, especially at the amateur level, get confirmation that you paid, whether it's on your phone and you have some sort of um, you're making this is crazy oh i missed it again <laughs> your eyes were both over there were you they able won't show to hear up what that, i was it won't show up this on the recording though you're the one that's frozen i was yeah you prick all right i'm saying <clears throat> that i want people to get oh and you did it again god damn you so who's frozen me or you you, you. i'm frozen yep Get receipt. Get receipt that you've paid. It happens probably every show because there's multiple crossovers, people, lots of money being exchanged, lots of this and that. Let's um, be honest. Get right? it these, done. These promoters don't want credit card. They want cash, right? So that they can say, look, this show made five grand, like whatever. It, it's they, they disincentivize you for using a credit card. So if you're going to use cash as they're encouraging you to do, um, and a lot of these shows, I remember doing some shows where it, credit card wasn't an option. It was cash and it was, you know, they're having it in a high school. There's an ATM down the hall, go get cash. You got to get summer seat. That's exactly right. Because you just have no proof. You can sign up for multiple classes. If you're not on the list, you can't prove it. And in her case, like, again, nobody thinks of this. So it's really valuable. We're talking about this. Had she been able to go to her phone and show something, they they probably would have let her in in that moment. Right. Yep. They would. And that's why it will, it's not likely to happen at a national event. Yeah. One, because there's not many crossover. Um, and two, um, you can't bring cash with this a thousand competitors right right right. it'll all be done online exactly you have to sign up in often cases at least a week in advance online yeah right right Uh, that might actually be that might be the better point right is is 
Um, for these shows, you can register in advance online, but day of the show, they don't want credit card. They want all cash. Right. So if you know you're doing the show, you know, they always have cutoffs of whether it's like three days out, five days, seven days out. It might be smart to just do it online because you have that, that email receipt. Right. That's a great point. Um, tell us uh, quickly about Jim Hub again. We got to do an update of, of what's going on. What was last week like? Jay got to meet the uh, the Empower Girls. That's yeah, the Northeastern Girls. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we have um, people won't know, but um, early, early on, I got connected to one Northeastern girl who's like family was friends with a guy I used to train like 10 years ago. And he reached out to me and said, Hey, you know, my, my friend's daughter's going to Northeastern. She likes lifting. I see you have a gym, you know, look, watch out for her. So I invited her to the gym and it turns out she was part of this Northeastern women's weightlifting club. And then she started bringing a bunch of the girls. So we had like 10 of the girls coming multiple times a week and they're all incredible, great attitudes, like super, super humble they train harder than most guys that are in here with, with a great attitude. Then they asked me to speak at Northeastern and it was the women's club with the men's club and then open to anybody. So uh, this past week, the, the women's club, I think they got 16 or 18 of the girls all to come to the gym at night, like 7 PM on last Tuesday. And uh, it was the best energy I've ever seen in a gym, like ever multiple trainers were here. And Every time anyone went for some kind of PR, like I'm going to throw an extra 10 aside, let's see if I get it. Everybody stopped what they were doing and just cheered that person on. I've never seen any, you see it in like a video where some guy's going for some crazy deadlift and everybody stops or a bench. This was person after person after person. And finally, I was like, I got to get in on this. Like, like this is the craziest energy. I was like, all right, girls, my turn. I'm going to bench you. Right? Um, so it was the best thing I've ever seen. Like, I, like, I wish I could have that in the gym every night, just yeah. the positive energy, everybody training hard. People were constantly coming up, asking me for tips of how to do stuff. So everyone was so humble. It wasn't yeah. about like showing off or proving yourself. And yeah, we got some, some cool footage of, of that craziness. Mm -hmm. And obviously Jay was in town and a bunch of these girls, you know, Jay had hit me up earlier in the day and said, Hey, are you in the gym? I may come by. And you know, you never know his intentions to come by. Things may take him elsewhere. And so Jay comes in and like five minutes after Jay's here, a bunch of these Northeastern kids come in. There's like five or six of them, mostly the girls. And obviously they all know who Jay is. And Jay's actually like filling up his water bottle and the girls are all by the cubbies, putting their stuff away. And they say, Hey girls, turn around and say hi to Jay Cutler. And he's like right behind him and their jaws drop. Yeah. And, but they leave him alone. Jay trains with, with his girlfriend, Angie, they're training. And Jay leans over to me and he's like, who are these girls? Like, you can tell they're babies. They're 18, 19, 20. Yeah. But they're in there just training super hard. And, you know, it was, it was out of place in the best possible way. Like, you don't see that often. So Jay had followed me and he's like, is that part of the, the thing that you spoke at at Northeastern? I said, yeah, yeah, you know, they're, they're awesome. And he asked what kind of questions they asked. And then Jay's like, would they want me to speak there? You know, and I, my jaw drops. And I call over the girl that's the president. I'm like, hey, Jay wants to know if you want him to speak at your club. And she's freaking out. He goes to show you the kind of person Jay is. Nobody and like him. He spent two hours with these kids, a bunch of the, the guys that were in the gym. You know, what are you doing? You're going to compete someday? And people didn't even know. They're like, yeah, uh, Nate and Jose are, are encouraging me to do New England's. And you see Jay kind of smile, you know, like we're, we're grooming people to give it a shot and do his show. Yeah. And Jay's like, let me take a look at you. And the kids are like, what? Like, take your shirt off, hit some poses. So you have these kids that are like 22, 23, start hitting poses. Jay starts fixing their posing in the gym. Now try this shot. And they don't know, they don't know the poses, you know? So he's like, oh, let me show you a side tricep, what you do. So I started getting this stuff on video. I was like, this is nuts. Like, what gym are you going into that you've got four-time Mr. Olympia hanging out, asking you about your personal goals, telling you to hit poses, fixing your posing. Like, yeah. this is and he, he, he got on the sled and had Gabby push him on the sled. <laughs> we are pushing him on, on the, yeah, on the, the rogue sled. Craziness on the turf. And we were pushing him back and forth. Yeah. I, I've never, I, it was crazy. It, I was just like, 
you know, you're just so used to Jay being the guy with the line of a hundred people and, you know, certainly being personable, but this was just another level, you know, this is another side of Jay. He's usually, you know, he's very interactive, but sort of monotone. Mm -hmm. Um, Here he was having so much fun laughing his ass off, getting on the sled, yelling at the girl, having the girl push him around, you know, it was definitely a different, more relaxed, playful version of Jay, um, which is amazing that it got to happen at Gym Hub and uh, all these kids, you know, that's what it's all about. You know, you, you don't see it anywhere else. When you say that, where do you see this? You don't, you absolutely don't. It's somewhere where someone like Jay has to feel comfortable. And, uh, um, you know, that's the beauty of that place. People go in there, they get inspired to, to do, you know, the equipment alone inspires you. You know, you you want to do legs when you walk in there, even if it's arm day. Yeah, you, yeah. You know, you 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 want to use everything and, and watch people because there's a lot of people in there that can do real shit. You know, yeah. um, and everyone's working hard. It's very seldom that you see people in there that aren't putting any effort in. You know, maybe one person, and. Um, don't say her name, Nate. I see you. I see you. Your brain ticking. But yeah, Jay commented that he looked around and he started asking me about the business. He's like, "How you do it?" Because you know we're never mobbed. We're never like a, a prime. You know, in some memberships, we're not. You're not going to have a hundred people in the gym. And it's mobbed. It's a reservation. We cap it at twenty people. When it hits twenty, you can't come in. Yeah. So Jay was just kind of curious because like the people that were there, we probably had like um, 10, 12 people in the gym right? Like nothing crazy, but everybody was leaving Jay alone, letting him do his thing. They're training hard. It's like, oh, there's Jay Cutler over there. Cool. Got to do my set. Like that kind of thing. And Jay picked yeah, up on yeah. it, you know? And these are young kids. You don't see that, you know? So Jay was the one that was walking up to them. Like, what's your deal? You yeah. know, like it, it's, it was so cool to see. And, and I, you know, so much respect for these kids of how they handled it because, um, you know, eventually towards the end when Jay was sillier and pushing him on the sled and people were like, you know, hey, we're about to leave. Could we get a picture with you before we leave? Right. So nobody was interrupting his workout or any of that nonsense. And Jay was like egging him on. He's like, all right, what are we going to hit, guys? Like they just wanted to stand there and take a picture. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, no, 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 no. We're all hitting front double biceps. Right. Yeah. And and then one of the girls, you know, we've got the uh, the changing room that's like a ends up being a posing room because the lighting's really good. What the girl Gabby, right, that just has no filter is yeah. like, I don't want to do it here. Jay, come in the room with me and I want to see your quads. Lift up your leg. Like she, she's ordering them around. Like, yeah, yeah, I yeah. was just like, oh shit. Like I can't even imagine talking to Jay like that, right? And he was getting a kick out of it. Like who's this 19 year old girl bossing me around? But he it did it. It was a great picture too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lift, and his leg was shredded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's awesome. I love it. So such good memories. And, and like, certainly for me, it's it's, more than I ever could have hoped for, you know, it's like you all, you know, every bodybuilder wants to have a gym and wants to have the community and you envision this stuff and, and you don't quite know how to make it happen, but you, you want it to be the place, you know, the, everybody knows your name and the community and everybody gets great workouts. Um, and for me, it's absolutely been that it's surpassed any expectation I had in terms of, of that. But what's been really cool is the, the the byproduct of people that were already coming here and loving it on multiple occasions getting to spend two hours with jay cutler and take photos and dude these girls were telling me you know they're posting photos where they're like silly flexing with jay or pushing jay on the sled like that's not you met jay in passing at a supplement store and you know like this is i was hanging out with jay and he was that comfortable that i you know so it and so they were getting like a hundred messages from their college peers being like how did that happen how are you you know like that just doesn't happen like and so these kids were walking around feeling like a million bucks you know and jay knows what he's doing you know like you know jay came to the gym and he he was like you know gotta come here and support you and and make sure you get some video of me training here you know and post it yeah he he knows what he's doing it's there's nothing about this for him he's he's doing this for other people 100 percent, 100 percent. so um before we go let's let's touch on one subject it's about negativity and how you handle it um this industry is a melting pot of negativity there's a lot of uh haters in in people that are 
just going to try to tear you down to build themselves up. Now, um, I mean, you don't take that approach ever. I certainly don't. I don't, um, you know, in fact, I try to go out of my way to do nice things for these people. Um, you say kill them with kindness. Uh, um, what 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 um what is your advice to people that are you know you're a new business in town there are people that that don't want you to be around there are people that are uh going out of their way to shit on you calling it the basement gym um which i think is brilliant and we got to make some shirts um <laughs> right yep, yep. um it, it you know and that's the type of example someone wants to shit on you and say something like that, we'll make a shirt about it. Yeah. Because we will turn it into a positive. If you give me lemons, I'm I'm gonna make crystal. Like, yeah. you, you know, he, I think uh you have done an amazing job at, at you know controlling yourself when you very well could have been pissed off and lashed out, but you've done you've made some great posts about um so a lot of it I, i've i've stolen a bunch of stuff from gary v who you know certainly is all over instagram and um a marketer and business owner and he has he has two quotes about this dude i asked you about this two years ago when we started doing these things during COVID of how you deal with the trolls you know on your um when you go on instagram live or a post you know um there's just you might have 50 people that are telling you how ugly you look right and so part of it, you know, there's the first part of like the negative comments and, and Gary V has a thing that's just like, you know, is Michael Jordan going around shitting on people on Instagram? Yeah. You know, no, like you're, you're, you're so focused on your goals and your thing. The person that's doing that is a really sad person. And it's like, you almost want to treat him with compassion because like, man, what is life like going through your day so fixated on someone else, right? And you have to bring them down to feel better about yourself. Like you almost have to treat those people with compassion because they're in a really bad place. So Gary Vee kind of talks about that. And then there's the quote that I, I posted um, not too long ago that says, you know, how do you have the tallest building in town? You're, there's two ways, right? One is to put in the work and build the tallest building. The other is to tear down every other building until yours is the tallest building, you wow. know? And so for me, the love in any of this stuff and trying to be a bodybuilder and, and, and music and now in the gym is I love the work, you know, that's, that's the fun. There's, there, there is no end, right? Even for me of like, the end was get a pro card and be done with, with bodybuilding. And it's like, but I love the work. I need, I need the next thing, right? I don't know how I'll ever do as a pro, but I, I need that next show because I love the work and the improving. So same thing for the gym. Um, it's about trying to create the best environment so that everybody that comes that says there's something different about this place. Every time I'm here, I get the best workouts um, and I'm going to get in better shape the more that I train here. Uh, whether it's the equipment or the atmosphere. And I feel like that atmosphere starts with me. You know, I set the atmosphere. I'm not responsible for the whole thing, but certainly I could, I could tank it with a shitty attitude. You know, if, oh, if yeah. every time someone came in, I want to talk shit about another gym. Well, that's already ruining their experience coming to my gym, you know? Right. Um, I'd rather have someone come in and just nerd out and be like, bro, let me show you this new chess machine we just got yesterday. This thing is sick, you know, and have my enthusiasm rub off on them. So, you know, you're right. It's, it's, you know, it, it's going to happen. And, you know, if you're not doing anything worthwhile, no one's going to talk about you. You know, you know, this, as soon as you started, I'm sure the more successful you got, the more hate you got on these public forums of Instagram For sure. and, sure. Does it change what you're doing and your goals? No. It, you know, if, if you let it get to you, certainly it can, but it's not going to help you. It's, it's, it's only, it's, it's really sad people who are probably in a bad place in their life and uh, would do much better if they focused on improving their life, putting in the work to build their tallest building rather than tearing down everybody else. Exactly. Exactly. On that note, um, 
I wanted to share that uh, I don't know how to, I'm not uh, technically savvy. So I, I remembered that I had a video of Cedric coming to my room in 2017 and Chris looking at him to pose because uh, the lighting in his room wasn't any good. Um, so it, it's a, the, the Olympia video of, from 2017 on the Boston Mass YouTube channel. And it's in the first minute. It shows Cedric come to my room and Chris is looking at him posing. Then Cedric is watching me pose and uh, commenting. And he's like, you know, if I had glutes like that, I would shove my trunks right up my ass. <laughs> It was so funny. It's it's a great scene. Um, I forgot that I forgot all about it. Like when he when he passed away, and then just the other day, I was like, I swear to God, I have video footage of Cedric, and uh, it, it's on that that YouTube. It happens to be the same one. I don't know if you ever saw this, but we went to food shopping, and you know, as we were leaving, all the roads were closed off because a guy. Was hanging off the side of a building. Oh, and shit. Ine no, in inevitably, he jumped in into his death. He was over 10 stories high. And um, what a morbid, crazy video it was. Um, but in that video, the very first minute, Cedric is in it and shows him posing at the 27 Olympia in my room. And he looked massive. He was. Wow. 290. You know I can always find it and screen grab it for you and send it to you. So you have just that clip too, if you want to post it later. Yeah, do that. Do that for me. I'll find that. So one, one last question for you before we go. And uh, I meant to ask you this earlier. So obviously you've, you've talked on other podcasts of, you know, the terrible news of Cedric and it's, it's a, now a long list of, um, you know, really big names, people that you knew, interacted with, competed with. One thing I was going to ask you, so, you know, you, you had to exit the sport due to your hip right? Just, you just couldn't, couldn't train the way you needed to train anymore. You eventually got a hip replacement. Let's say that hadn't happened, right? And you were still um, at a place where you're, you're always going to be top five in the Olympia. You're still in the mix um, and your hip was good. You could still train hard. Would you be, would you be second guessing everything now if you were still a top five Olympian and, and, you know, all of the joints were good and you could still go with, with all of the deaths, would, would that make you think twice about competing another year? Probably not, because it didn't make these guys second guess. Yeah. Every one of these guys who passed away didn't second guess it. They thought they were doing all the right thing, doing the blood work, seeing a doctor. Every one of these guys has, was spending time with doctors. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if those doctors said, stop today or you're going to die. You know, I don't know if that conversation ever took place. I don't know. Um, as long as my health markers are checking out, as long as you, you know you don't know what it was, um, I would have liked. I would like to think that I would know when to say enough. I was already coming to that, that point because I was no longer, you know, most of my life in bodybuilding, I was always a threat to win. Any show that I did, I was a threat to win, uh, and, and after. 20 I was just getting older and then things weren't recovering the same and I wasn't I wasn't improving I was maintaining um, or trying to maintain so I knew at some point it ends you know when you're no longer fighting for the um, the number one spot in 2015 was the greatest year ever for me in my career and also the worst mm. because it showed me no matter what i am not winning this no matter what and i was already 41 years old um so it kind of like pulled the rug right out from under me and i probably should have retired that day then and there at the olympia um in 2015 that probably would have been my wisest decision. Um, but, you know, I went on to compete, still had a few years of contracts left over. I still made some more money. I still won a few more shows. Um, but I was no longer a real threat to win the Olympia. I was even, I was third in the Olympia in 2017. 
Um, but in my mind, I still wasn't a real threat to win the Olympia. Um, those guys were getting better. I was not. Yeah. I was, I, I was good enough to maintain and, and have condition, really good condition to, to land me where I did. Um, but that said, I, I don't know. I don't know. And this would be take a whole nother hour for us to discuss. Um, I don't know. And I, I don't think this isn't the norm. You know, bodybuilders continuing it well into their forties isn't the norm either. Yeah. Um, but this many people passing away is not the norm. So I think that there's a whole host of things causing this combined. Of course, the PEDs, of course, them being huge people. Uh, and I, it doesn't have to be Cedric to mean a huge person. You know, uh, um, George is a gigantic person for his height. I, at five, three and change and over 210 pounds, that's a big obese person. You know, it doesn't matter if it's muscle or fat. That's a big person. Um, so even to this day, I have to, you know, I don't do anything. I, I do TRT. That's it. Um, in very low amounts, because I don't know if even that, putting that into you could be dangerous. I get short of breath anytime, you know, little flutters or whatever. And my mind goes crazy now. I'm like, what the fuck? You know, I've got a little dizzy spell. Should I go to the hospital? I don't, you know, and it's probably a little normal every day. Um, I'm certainly getting more anxiety over this whole shit than I ever did. Yeah. And I don't do anything. Right, right, you know? right, right. I'm not even like squatting heavy. I'm not training like an animal anymore. I, I just do my cardio. I eat good, have, you know, a snack once a day. And um, I'm in good shape. I'm, I'm lean. Um, you know, someone asked me the other day, when, you know, have you thought about trying to you know, diet? And Jeff Sue asked me you know you want to like diet and get real lean i'm like dude how lean do i need to be right, i'm lean right. enough i have abs i don't like um i don't need to be peeled out of my mind like is it gonna be you think about doing it and i'm like i do cardio five days a week i'm 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 in decent shape i don't need to be that guy anymore um once in a while it might be fun to do a, a diet for a couple of months and you know i don't know but that's the furthest thing from my mind right now right, right, right you know i like helping other people do it but to answer that question i would have liked to hope i always said that if chris or steve told me hang it up then i would yeah. but that i would decide to do it before they told me yeah you know, Chris enjoyed working with me so much that he wouldn't have told me. Yeah. He'd have been like, ah, you, you still look great. You only got one leg. Just put that good one in front. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I, I'm like, dude, it was time. It was time. Um, I'm glad I did when I did. Because, uh, you know, nobody wants to be up there looking like shit. Um, I, I, I did look kind of shitty, but um, better than most. Enough to still make top five, and probably, you know, arguably, you should have placed better than fifth right. last year. You know, so if that's your worst, uh, that's a it's a good way to go out. Right, right. But we will reserve some time for the next time and and delve a little deeper into this topic because there's a lot to talk about. It is scary, and um, it's worth talking about. Um, that's for sure. But you know, I, also, I had a talk with Jay too to get his input, and and you know we'll save this for the next time. But there's, you know, you have the what are all the things you can do? Brainstorm, right? Like what can the league do? What should the competitors do? And then you have the other side, the sort of Seth Ferrosi video of like, fuck it, we're all adults. It's a free world. You know what you're getting into. If you die, you die. You know, it's not the league's uh, uh, a complete other side, which I don't think necessarily that's the answer. You know. Um, but yeah, there's, there's certainly a lot of stuff that, you know, you touched upon and we can go into at length of what are the commonalities here? Certainly over 40 guys walking around at, you know, a massive weight for their height, whether it's 300 pounds, like a Sean Roden or, you know, even George, right. He must've gotten up to at least 
what 240 you'd say oh, yeah you know more uh, at least 240 um you know which is massive for for his frame you know how much of it is that at the age that they're at i think the one commonality is this pandemic yeah i think that's it because people have been huge for years people have been doing peds for years yeah. people have been doing extreme dieting for years people have been 40 years old for years yeah the only thing that hasn't been combined along with that all those things is um either the disease or it's vaccination yeah um, can we say that word um yeah but it's you know one of the known things from that uh, you know guy was a good example of, of um uh, he got covid and then had lasting side effects of of blood clotting way after the fact right yeah. and so that's that's a common thing for for people that aren't athletes everyday people started getting clotting now you combine that with somebody who's using peds which is thickening up their blood which already can put you at risk for a clot yeah. Um, we may find that, I mean, logically, that seems to be uh, um, something that seems like it, it really could, could be, you know, the, the, the smoking gun there, you know, on paper. Um, and I don't know how you prove this, you know, like, that the combination of these two things caused that when either of them on their own could have done it too. Well, I don't have the proof, but I, I see it. And never in my life have I experienced this many people passing away um, at such a rapid pace. And this that's the only, as you say, smoking gun. That's the only one that I can look to. It's way beyond coincidence now. Yeah. You know, it is what it is. So we'll, yeah, that'll be a talk for the next time because I'm sure between the two of us, and and certainly this has been covered by a lot of people too, throwing out a lot of ideas, but it's it's worth talking about, you know, of whether it's something the league can do, things at least every competitor should be doing along the way, and and how much of it is that sort of libertarian, it's your own business, um, you know, let everyone be, let them do what they want to do, and, you know, what happens, happens. So there's a lot that we can cover there the next, next video. All right, buddy. All right, you have a good one. Talk to you soon. All right, bye.